Thank you, Akos. So let's continue with another mission critical core functionality or functional area for BIM, uh, which is coordination, bringing together the work of larger teams inside architecture. So how, how an architecture team coordinates their work? So they have a project origin, obviously, in the uh, BIM database, uh, and they organize their work around stories. Once the structural engineer comes into picture, obviously the global origin still works, but uh, with the structural engineer, uh, you speak along the lines of a structural grid. Then uh, the whole thing gets tricky when the MEP engineer comes into picture. So uh, uh, at that time, you have to go down to the element level, and you coordinate your work with the peculiar type of element, which is an anti-element, I would say, uh, the void, you know, the uh, mechanical void. Um, how you do that is uh, called a special workflow uh, provision for voids, so the mechanical engineer uh, figures out where uh, the st structures need to be break and break through, broken through, uh, and then sends provisions of, for void uh, to the structural engineer and the architect. And uh, in a typical building, there are hundreds of such provisional for voids, and this is not a very static thing. So as the design evolves, uh, these um, matching points need to be uh, adjusted, modified, and kept up to date. So there is a very peculiar workflow that needs to be supported on the BIM level with proper documentation and a listing and scheduling, uh, which is not so easy. So to avoid mistakes like that, uh, your you know, revision cloud casting uh, concrete, uh, you have to provide uh, BIM level information about uh, the places of the holes, you know, and not just, so solid element operation is not enough because uh, the clearance of these uh, uh, voids is bigger than the actual element, and also you need to have uh, the proper documentation. So uh, without talking further uh, about the theory, let me invite uh, Saboc on stage who can show this uh, one in life for you. Thank you, Akos. Thank you, Akos. Hello, everyone. So as you heard, openings or structural openings, uh, or in other words, mechanical voids must be handled by all disciplines in the AEC industry. So we needed a true BIM workflow. And in order to cover this, we, are, we designed this new tool, the new opening tool. And uh, let's see how this tool works. So, the opening tool was created with the IFC definition in mind, meaning that an opening belongs to one element, but it can be linked to multiple elements at the same time. So see, this is one opening cutting through all layers at once. But what else can we do with this particular opening? Um, an opening can be aligned with the surface, or they can cut through elements uh, vertically and horizontally. And they can also have a custom angle, which gives us flexibility in geometry and design. And also, uh, not, not, uh, last but not least, it also can cut through multiple element types at the same time. So the same element is cutting through multiple element types. OK, just remember that there are two basic types of openings, uh, recesses or niches and voids. Now both of them can be modeled with the same tool. And it's not only that they are, uh, that they are 3D geometry is correct, they can be dimensioned, and we can also place labels on them uh, associatively, for example, pointing at their classification, at their data, at their uh, high byte <laughs> information and such. And it's not only labels that it's capable of, it's not only their documentation, it's of course scheduling. So these openings can be scheduled one by one with the linked elements and with their um, thickness, height, and, uh, and width values. OK, so this was the basic tool demo. Let's see how this tool can be used in practice. So the first example I'm going to show you is uh, from the early design stage when, for example, the architects need to know the location, needs to plan the location of the vertical voids uh, penetrating through uh, the slabs. For example, for the elevator slabs or uh, elevator shafts or the mechanical ductworks. Now, how would he do this before? Probably placed uh, a slab hole into the element and then we had to place a 2D symbol on the floor plan. 
Now this can be done uh, in one step with the new tool. I can uh, I just select one extra favorite, and as and as you see, I can place an opening with one step with the correct 2D representation. Now let's switch to 3D and see how this looks because it's not only uh, one um, it's not only one view. It's not only the 2D where it's represented. Of course, it's a 3D body. I can select this element, and as I told you, since it can penetrate to multiple structures at the same time, I can easily add all slabs and all stories. And then this one element can, uh, can be can cut through all of my stories at once, and they can be moved together as well. Now let's try a different approach. By not planning this on the floor plan, but by using editing aid morph bodies to cut through uh, to cut through all my structures. And for this, I'm using now morph bodies. Uh, what could I do? What could I do with these? I can select uh, these elements, and to create uh, openings based on these morph bodies, we have implemented a new editing palette. Uh, it's called Create Openings from Selection, and then I have a little palette over here which can be used to create these openings. Just to explain a little bit uh, how this works, we can choose the shape of the opening, we can uh, give an offset, we can add a clearance if the engineer or the structural or the mechanical engineer has requested, and we have a lot of, uh, lot of other controls. Now in this case, since I use this mor these morph bodies at editing aid, I do not need to keep these operator bodies, but merging these uh, nearby openings is probably a good idea in order to create one uh, opening that penetrates through all structures. So what happens if I press uh, Create Openings? All of them were created at once, and I can select them and see, uh, as a reminder, these are one element cutting through all, element, uh, all slabs at the same time. So this was one example, and uh, let me show you another use case, which is uh, from later design stages, when, when, when model coordination becomes more and more frequent, and we need to exchange, uh, according to the previous workflows, we need to exchange with the MEP and with the structural engineers more. Now, Akush mentioned this name. It's called provision for void workflows. To explain this a little bit better, let me switch to Celebrity to show you, uh, show you how this works. And I specifically thank our Swiss partner and clients for providing us with this model. They, uh, they have worked on this uh, in, the near, uh, in the near past. So what does this look like? We have an architectural model, but what we also have, we have a structural model. Uh, we have a structural model and an MEP model in the same, uh, in the same IFC uh, file. So, um, and at this design stage, the MEP engineer has located important points where their uh, structure, where their elements pass through load-bearing structures. And it's very important to know where these points are. And they need to highlight these points for us in order to be uh, able to create the uh, required openings in our architecture model as well. How could I locate these elements? How could I? How could I uh, locate these elements uh, and where they are? They highlight these, uh, they highlight these points by sending us provision for void geometries. Um, and with the help of these editing bodies, we can create our openings in our own file based on, based on the MEP model. So switching back to ARCHICAD, I'm just going to, uh, going to switch one view. So how do we receive these files? These will be part, these provision for void geometries will be the part of the imported or hotlinked um, MEP IFC model, but not part of the MEP structure. They will be this editing aid for us, which we can use to create the openings. These can cut through slabs, for example, but usually most of these openings would be, uh, we need to place most of these openings into the walls. And imagine how many of them are in, uh, in one building. This isn't a too big project, and even here I have hundreds, uh, maybe 150 openings that need to be placed at once. How can I create all openings in one run? Um, now these have, since it's an IFC model and since this is a coordinated IFC model, these elements have, uh, these elements have a classification called provision for voids. So I can select their geometry based on their classification and select them in one go. And just to be a little bit more exact, I'm, just, I'm going to zoom in on a detailed example. 
So over here, you see all these openings on the ground floor, and we need to create them. Uh, we need to create them in one go. I'm going to use the same editing palette that I have used before. In this case, I will keep my original elements because they are not in my domain, and I need to uh, and I need to keep them around. But merging uh, doesn't make uh, doesn't make too much sense at the moment. However, since the MEP engineer can request a clearance around these voids, I can add an extra 10 millimeter clearance uh, around these uh, opening bodies. So what happens if I uh, create the openings? Uh, they are created at the moment. Let me just turn off uh, these layers for you to be able to see it. And I'm going to change the uh, the uh, the graphical override. So see, now all these openings were created in one go in the 3D environment. But it's not only the 3D that we need to cover. As Akos mentioned, the one of the most important things is to document these on the floor plan. So. I will switch quickly to uh, the floor plan view, and you will be able to see that it's not only the 3D body that we have generated with this, uh, with this command, it's also their uh, floor plan representation in the walls with the correct 2D symbol. And luckily, since we need to apply to different graphical standards in each country, uh, ArcCAD 23 library comes with, a, uh, comes with a set of 2D symbols that you can use, since the opening element has a built-in functionality to cleverly use these GDN symbols as, uh, for, their odd, uncut, uh, for their cut and uncut views. So you can choose from a number of, uh, number of settings. All right, so hopefully I could show you how this new tool works and how you can utilize, uh, how you can utilize their capabilities. Um, it's not only 3D and it's not only 2D where they can work, they can help in coordination workflows and their inter interdisciplinary communication as well. Akos, thank you. And thank you all. <laughs>